So thanks very much for, for your presentation. I can see there's quite a number of questions for you and Nimbi in the Q&A window. So please um, go into the Q&A window and um, the two of you can answer the questions as we go along. So I've just seen a question here from from Dennis. So I don't see uh, security as a risk for cloud services. The highest risk is always at the user level. So the more you are able to move the cloud from physical endpoints, the less the risk I would say. Okay, so that's a two prong approach. How depending on the value, it's the value of the of what an attacker is trying to gain. If the if there is a value that, so as a lowest lowest hanging fruit in terms of value, if going through your personal device is the fastest way to gain access to data, then that's the fastest way. If all the data moves to cloud, then attackers move their attention to cloud. So you're not you're just shifting the goalposts. You're not really uh, removing risk altogether. So there's a question on how can users of various providers change their default router credentials, e.g. Zuku, Safaricom. So during the installation of these routers, you received uh, a link or, or you should have received a link from your service provider showing you how to change the username of uh, your, your new home network. At that same link should also allow you to change the password because by default, I believe Safaricom use part of your name that you give them, the at sign and a series of three or four sequential numbers. So those, those, yeah, those are just the things you have to change. Additionally, if you can speak to the service provider to give you access to the router itself so that you may change the password. Some service providers agree to this, others don't. But if, of course, you know what kind of router it is and you can make the change for yourself because it's still sitting on the default username and password. So in regards to the use of password managers, uh, my recommendation would be probably I don't, my personal bias is don't use password managers, create your own passwords, make sure they actually create your own passphrases, don't store them within a password manager, because then if the password manager is compromised, all your accounts are compromised. So avoid having all your eggs in one basket. In regards, Paul, in regards to the SS, SSID broadcasting, um, I'll try to find you that link where whether your SSID is being broadcasted or not actually doesn't have a, that big of an effect in regards to how secure your network is, because this is just an issue of visibility. So there have been some papers, which I'll, I'll try to get and share them with you, where when you make your network hidden, it does make it a lot easier for attackers to, attackers tend to feel that's what they need to, to attack, sort of to probe into. Okay. Yes. So um, in the matter of hybrid cloud, the, the way to think about this is once you move your workloads to the clouds, you, you should shop around for the best deal you can. So for instance, if you're doing uh, machine learning loads, doing some machine learning, Google gives you by far the cheapest computes for GPUs. They've got these TPUs. But the easiest thing to implement is something like AWS Personalize or AWS Forecast. So if you wanted to do forecasting, um, you could be up and running with sales forecasting, inventory forecasting in, in minutes on AWS. But as you develop skills and knowledge, you could then move that workload to AWS. Um, if you are building an ERP system, um, you should shop around, and then you'll notice that um, Azure, Microsoft have got something called the common data model, and this dramatically eases how you build out an ERP system. So go and look for the Microsoft common data model that's open source, and then build your ERP or inventory or materials requirements and planning or whatever it is on top of on top of an open source common data model so you've got to shop around for what is best and you can use all of them simultaneously 
So you've got to shop around for the cheapest computes, the cheapest storage, the cheapest ML, the easiest. So you're not constrained to anyone. And I think what you'll also find is that in terms of security, all of these cloud providers use something called a shared responsibility model, where they provide some element of the security, say um, the web firewall or a denial of service um, protection, but you're responsible for your application and how your users use that application. So that's that's the first. Right. So um, that's 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 pretty much it. So if you're looking Azure, and the government runs on Azure, I mean, or it did. I don't know what they do now. They're in Kenya. Um, um, AWS is in Africa, but it's not in Kenya. But Google is here too. So if if you've got data locality issues, um, please use Azure. Well, I'm not I'm not I'm not selling anybody. But I, I'll say you would have a problem if you're using Azure or Google at the moment. Okay, and I see one from Robin. Um, startups and agencies that are still hesitant and clear on the business value. Uh, let me put it like this. If you've got a data center, you're wasting time and money. It's that there's, there's really no business case you can make for having a server in some hot room in a corner. It simply doesn't make sense anymore. So before you spend... Um, $2,000 to go buy a rack server anywhere. If you're buying a rack server, you're wasting money. I think that's that's the bottom line. Um, it remains a capital asset. So in, in eight months when you want to upgrade, you can't get rid of it. Just simply, just don't buy a server. Buy a laptop, buy a tablet, absolutely don't buy a server. So if you're a startup, um, it certainly makes sense to spend $20 a month than to spend $1,000 on a server, if you can get one. Okay, um, so in so far as, well, let me put it like this. How does government, government acceptance of the clouds? Everything in the Kenyan government is moving to the clouds. Um, they've, they've got a framework agreement last time I heard with Microsoft Azure, and they're consolidating data centers around Azure and retaining some critical infrastructure on, on Safaricom. I, I know one of the issues with the cloud is what happened as INEC, um, sorry, what's it called? IBP, um, where, where, where the cloud got a bad name across the board. But that wasn't the cloud's problem, that was an IBC problem. So let's not complete the issues. There's a question that um, had been asked by Samuel Joroge, and I think this was immediately after Yimbi's presentation. He says maybe he missed out on the definition of cloud because many people define, define cloud differently. Think of, think of the cloud as any computing or storage that you don't have to own or manage yourself. So it is anything that all you need to do is authenticate and connect, and then you can use it. Once you think of it like this, you stop thinking about it as being over the internet or over your LAN. So what cloud is becoming, as I said, there are these four levels. There's servers on in this cloud. There's a platform in the cloud. And then there are functions and microservices in the cloud. So it is a mix of building blocks that you can put together into any conformation that you want. And there are a bunch of large providers of these building blocks that you should actually use. So just to share some of what we actually, one of my firms does. Um, so what we do is we buy these old software companies, 10, 15, 20 years old, that are, are losing ground, are possibly making a loss. And what we do is we take them and redesign them to actually sit on the cloud. And what you find is that a lot of on-premise accounting software, um, point of sale software, when we move it to the cloud, from having a team of 30 or 40 engineers 
all of whom are bringing the company down, we can cut the headcounts to one administrator who's administering two or three different companies and bring the total operating costs to one two hundred dollars a month and still maintain the same the same revenue because we've still got the same customers and the same license fees. So if you're if you're making eight ten thousand dollars a month from one piece of software, instead of spending four thousand dollars of that paying for two engineers, you bring your total costs of operations down to a hundred dollars. And now it makes sense. So you can see that moving to the cloud as a strategy is not only cost effective, provides a superior customer experience, but it also means fewer headaches because we don't have to run a server. We don't have to worry about um, uptime, resilience, a lot of the security issues around denial of service, we don't have to bother about. And so it makes sense for that company. Sorry. So to start off yeah. um, on Irene's question, first of all, ensure that the data that you have on cloud as a backup is encrypted. So at, at any point, if that data is, if an attacker is able to compromise or get a hold of that data, they are limited in terms of what they can do to it. And remember, attackers go, go for low hanging fruits. So if they get your data and someone else's data and that other piece of data is not encrypted, then they are likely to forget about your data or just to keep it uh, for future. Then in regards to what you've asked about, does that mean physical backups are made redundant? Well, they're not going to be obsolete because uh, we've already seen a lot of advancements in terms of the physical changes to physical devices and servers in regards to storage with uh, SSD hard drives and VME hard drives. So physical backups will be there for those who treat it as an option. And again, this you'll determine this through your risk classification. You have one backup on cloud You have a, and you have your physical backup. If to the point where technology develops the point that that physical backup can be compressed so small that it's cost effective to have it, then you would essentially have it. Sorry, so I can see there's a question from Norbert asking about uh, the standards for security for cloud. So during your agreement with your cloud provider, whether you're getting platform as a service, uh, infrastructure as a service, you are able to look at what different aspects of security do each one of which one of you are responsible for, and the agreement should be treated towards that. The other question from Samson. Um, yeah, so some of the mitigation steps you could put into place for sort of what I mentioned in the, in the new threat DNA. Uh, so for baited malware, just ensure that you are, you are, you don't click on every link you get. That's one, two, you don't need every new software or app on how to work from home to boost your productivity. Just don't let your internet excursions grow just because you're working from home. From increased phishing, uh, you can prevent emails which match your domain from, because then those are spoofed emails or emails with similar names from being sent over to you. Also for phishing, you, you can also implement two-factor authentication for your users and disable any anyone trying to log in from a geographical region that is not your country because, well, travel is at a standstill. And secure home networks. So just make make the right changes to your routers and your devices. Remove all the default passwords. For ransomware, this is just keeping up. Ensure you have an offline backup and also ensure that uh, you've updated your protection, your anti malice and the likes. For data collection, don't give out more data than is necessary. So you're looking at a new PDF, which asks you for your name, phone number, number of employees, the gender of the company. This, if that information feels like it's too much, don't download it. Alternatively, you can access temporary free email addresses that last for anywhere between 10 minutes to one hour, which will be valid email addresses. Then you provide for the other information you can provide. It doesn't have to be your information, provide anything you'd like to provide. 
then collect your data. For data mining, especially for the cloud providers, this is something you probably now have to speak to as an organization to your cloud providers to ask them what steps are they taking to to prevent this from being a challenge. For shadow IT, if it's a device issued by the organization, please ensure that all ch only changes changes can only be made through the administrator. That would mean as IT support or security would have to log into your devices remotely to for you to install any new software or to make any changes which require administrative actions. For deep fakes, this uh, it's quite difficult to tell what's real and what's maybe just don't believe what you see at first sight. For identity theft, which I think should be, which is quite a big issue, especially where we have miners involved, is to create, always create a new email address for the miner. Uh, the email address does not have to be anything in relation to their name. Information you provide, make it as either limit the information or give false information. Uh, that way you're not doing any harm to them. An authorized access, again, this just improve on whatever controls as an organization you have, ensure those controls can be extended to your team that is working remotely. Uh, Nimbi, there is a question on uh, uh, data protection. Do you want to take that? All right. So um, in terms of data protection, there, there are four elements. One, um, geographic localization, which I think was a very unfortunate, unfortunate policy. But for certain personally identifiable information, it has to remain in Kenya, um, unfortunately. So you've got to work out how to deal with that. There are multiple ways to deal with that. You could um, create a master table and just hash the names and use the hash as an index. Some people do this. Um, there, there are ways around, around ensuring that PA I does not go out onto out out of our out of our job. I think okay for for banks and financial institutions, they've got far more rigid far more rigid controls about how data should should be managed. And I think that that's a disservice. That that unfortunately, it's unfortunate that that's the case. But it reduces substantially reduces their agility and their ability to to evolve their services rapidly. But I think that there needs to be a policy push to rationalize our view around data and computing to, to bring it into the, into the modern world so that it, it works better. Um, if you happen to be in Rwanda, you're far better off. Um, maybe that's where you should go start, do a startup. Um, that's it. Um, I just wanted to comment on on, on deep fakes and some of these things. Um, if you go to GitHub, there's a lot of code on, on, on how to generate them face swaps, how to detect it. Um, go have a look. If you need pointers, I could create another deck with links to where you get the software. Okay, is there global legislation in place protecting clients' data? There isn't. So if you're in Europe, there's the GDPR, but by and large, what you should do is have a local copy of your compressed data and do multi-clouds. It is safest for you. But in terms of change management, uh, the cloud is really a back-end service. It's users don't know and don't care where the server is. So you re the people you really need to manage are all the, all the Luddites who think that the cloud is going to make them lose their jobs. So they need to retrain, reskill, and, and, and find a, a new place in, in the new emerging environments. Okay, thank you so much, Nimbi. Thanks, um, I think I think those are two very powerful presentations on cloud, uh, the security aspects of it, uh, policy areas, uh, and disability. Uh, so for that, I want to thank you for preparing uh, and delivering these two presentations for from you and Miti. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, the participants got to learn something new uh, today. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And uh, thanks to the participants. I hope uh, 
this was uh, an interesting session again from us. And uh, we look forward to hosting yet another webinar with you on Thursday. So uh, stay tuned, uh, stay safe, and uh, let's keep connecting. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you.